basically I've been wondering for a long time about how to uh, incorporate, like what you were saying about committing to things, how to do that in magic without simply just taking acting lessons, even though I think that it, it, it is worth its weight in gold, and also how to incorporate comedy into magic without actually detracting from the trick that you're doing. So I feel like a lot of people just throw in one-liners into their thing and then call themselves a comedy magician, but it's actually taking away from the magical moments, <laughs> exactly, um, and detracting from your overall, overall theme. So how can we build something like an actor would, so we're telling a story, or also not boring them like certain plays will, or not taking them on this long story about your grandfather and, uh, um, I mean, I, I do have a bit like that, but anyway going on about things and, and drawing it out and, and going overboard with overwhelming people with your acting as a magician. So I think there's little things that you can use to pepper comedy throughout and also pepper a little bit of acting. So one, just being able to perform in front of people and actually engage with them and make eye contact and, and uh, not turn your back to people, things that we, that we learn in high school drama class. Or gloss our eyes over. That was always, that was always my fear, my fear posture. When walking out either on stage in front of people, I'll simply just glaze my eyes over to avoid the reality of people there and just see a blur. Right. And I mean, my teacher, I went to acting school, so my teacher used to tell me to look over the people's heads and into the back. But if you're doing close-up magic, it's more obvious when you're looking over top of somebody's head the whole time. And so people <laughs> to get worried when I was doing that. So there, there are better ways than these, these tricks. <laughs> Max Maven once gave me a note. <clears throat> he said, you know, it's really obvious that you have to look at the theater before that the people come in so that you can see where the back row is or else when you're faking eye contact, it's obvious that you're looking at the exit side. You have to, you have to like, you know, have your deep audience, your middle yeah. audience, your low audience fake positions to look like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see looking, there's a chandelier there. There's not even the, there's not <laughs> even. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was just, it's, it's also how to establish that you're a magician right away with, uh, I guess we're going to call them sight gags for now. But we can learn through sight gags, through these things that are, are funny, how to commit to these things like we would be able to do in a magic trick because sometimes it's easier to commit to. You'll, you'll see the type of things that we do might be easier to commit to, believing that in your mind and making your audience believe it than it is to change the color of a card or make things levitate. So what's an example of a sight gag? Let's put, like, I'm, not, I'm not even, I don't even know what that kind of bit is. Right, so a sight gag is um, you, uh, sorry. Got a hangnail. If you're, if you're, are you? Mm. Ow. Oh. Ow. <laughs> um. <laughs> Did you, I just heard your finger uh, crack. I, I heard your bone fracture, friend. <laughs> I'm just eating a hard candy. Oh, is that, is that, um, so that's a sight gag. There's a sight gag. I have a nice, beautiful glass here full of. Ah, <laughs> nice. I have a glass handy. Um, I'm yeah. sorry, I have to put myself That's on. That's a sight regurgitate. I sound like Ernie back when he had lines in Sesame Street. They've taken all of Ernie's lines, so in honor so, of Ernie, I'm let give the stage to Elmo here. This is the example of a sight gag, and this is something that I would use when I come out on stage or if there's a lull in things. What we're learning right now with this is a reversal of expectations. So people don't think this is actually going to happen. It's hard to convince you guys that I'm actually distracted by a hangnail after I've been asked what a sight gag is because you're all magicians. But just something about simply being distracted by something that can't let you move on and, until and going back to speaking to the audience and engaging with people and also not getting more and more distracted by something that you, I'm not doing anything right now. I'm, I'm, I'm acting. Like there's a hangnail here. And then by shattering the finger, you just get that nice little pop of people. It's a great way to grab attention from people, reverse expectations. People aren't expecting that that's going to happen. Um, but they we also know it's not possible. We didn't tell anyone to bring any chiclets. What do we need to, what do, we need to do this trick? So this is very easy. You're going to get harder. <laughs> so pay attention. You go get oh, these. Gosh. Some kind of Canadian candy. No, no, these are, I'm sure these are Indonesian or something. <laughs> anyway, you go get one of these hard candies and just unwrap them. And uh, so I should also mention, there's a bit of misdirection here because I had to have that candy in my mouth the whole time. <laughs> that way I don't have to, um, yeah, things to do during an interview. These are just things that you can pepper and use that aren't, it's hard to build a whole effect out of it. Like we don't, we can't sit, I can't 
start with somebody and do this and then take a bow after it. It's just something that we add in as we go on. But you take a hard candy, mm -hmm. have that in my mouth the whole time that we're talking. So we had no, and I had no idea. So to, just to be frank, you fooled me. That's true. You didn't, you didn't know. You I asked. fooled entirely. Alas, I was ready. Um, so under the tongue, I find it harder to talk with than under my tongue. I think it sounds like I have a hard candy underneath my tongue. So we I just do. thought you were Canadian. I just <laughs> thought you were still 12. <laughs> no, in those numbers. So I put this in here, in the side of my mouth. So I, uh, I'm able to talk and I can keep it in my eye cheek. I can talk quite loudly. You can see inside of my mouth. And then when I'm ready, I just pick it up next to my teeth or onto my teeth in the back molars. So this is a little hard. Don't talk now. Put this into the put this into the back of the see I can switch very easily. You put your finger into the back of your mouth, make it look like it's in between your in between your teeth, but then it actually goes right next to it. Get ready to put your hands into your mouth a lot. And, uh, this is this is something that everyone just you know for the record we were talking about when we were setting this thing up. Does anyone give us a one if you remember the old creamer, the eyeball, the old punctured eyeball bit? You know what I mean? Does does everyone know what I'm talking about? We first discovered it in Cruel Tricks and Dear Friends, or at least I did when I was a young boy. I was always afraid to do it because I was afraid if I committed to it, I was literally going to stab my hand or my eyeball. And of course, if you don't commit to it, it it's not even, it just looks, you know, like you're taking a little creamer and dropping it on the plate. You so just look lot, gross. <laughs> it just doesn't even work, right? So one of the things we're really looking at right here, and everybody, you're at home, no one's looking, you're safe not being on the panel. Go ahead, take your fingers, you know, I would, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, you know. Mark, show us the position, man. Show us the position. It's and, right next to, right here, right next to your teeth. So mm -hmm. you can bite down. Here's the safety on this. You can bite down. <laughs> And not bite your own finger off. So there's such a thing as over committing with these things. Like if, you, if we're really going for it, you get excited, you can bite your finger. I actually did get an injury doing another thing that we're going to learn. I've never seen Mark not destroy an outfit on stage, literally. <laughs> exactly. You, he so commits. This goes into the next thing over here. I actually kicked, some of these things are going to be different doing them on camera. They play better in person, but I had to kick this to the side of the microphone. Hey, brother. You Tell us about it. You can feel it here. And then I bite down very hard on the hard candy until I get that nice oh, crunch. Okay. My spittoon. I'm tired <laughs> of these candies, let me tell you. It's like a minute to learn a lifetime to master, but the real secret for us all uh, is how do we begin? Because, you know, you were just talking about how one of these things is not in effect all by itself. Yeah. But what it is, is a remarkable way to create that magical atmosphere that the greatest magicians talk about. Um, you know, hey, I'm going to show you a trick. That's cool and everything. But if we can somehow draw people into the world of our reality and create of a space that's funky and weird and interesting, it really does create a more fertile ground for magic to actually happen. And so just this little thing of you getting sort of engrossed with your hangnail uh, and then that payoff is enough to let people know already, you, like you may, it, it reminds me of how Steve Martin would start with his banjo and he would never get to play a song. Yeah. He'd come out and play a few notes like he was gonna sing a song and he exactly. would, and all of a sudden his hangnails would start. And an hour later, the show would be over, and he might have played like literally one, one verse of a song, right? It's, yeah, it's exactly what magic is. We're leading people away from, you can do this. The longer you do this, not too long, the better the payoff is when you actually get the, because people will start to go, why is, you know, he's really interested in that hangnail that he has. And then finally, when the crunch comes, they realize it was inevitable. Something had to happen, but they realize that they've been had, so to speak, and you're leading them away from something for so long that when you finally get that, they realize that you're actually in control the whole time. So a lot of my comedy tends to come out of looking like I'm not in control and things are happening, but always knowing that it's going to come back to the effect in the end. Unless, of course, I'm actually messing up, but they'll never know. Um, yeah. By the time you get started, they, they literally don't know because that's how, it, I mean, it's the old magician in trouble. If it's such, it's like when Dave Williamson gets in trouble, no one knows because, you know, he's pretending to be holding on by a thread the whole time anyway. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just what stops these from being pranks, I guess, like these could just be little pranks that you can do is that you're, you're incorporating them and doing, it's kind of funny that you have this in your mouth for so long, just to be able to do that. But people won't think that you would possibly have a hard candy in your mouth for that long. The way I get out of this usually is to look also, you, we can do it with our pinkies too. 
crunch the pinky and then do this old bit where it looks like, you know, then your pink, I don't know if people can see that. Ooh. Your pinky is broken. Do you have this one here? Ooh. Be able to. So if you shatter it and then you do something like shrinking it or uh, <laughs> you know, bending it inward like that, which of course is just, we're bending at the thing here. I wish I can show, yeah. Alex, maybe you can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anything like that, biting the thumb and then being able to move it across like that, shattering anything and then being able to use it to do an actual magic trick, I think is interesting. Um, but we put that in there, we break it. And then what I like to do is I go, oh man, I love hard candies. It's so good. Um, <laughs> push it again. So we get that thing and then I can spit out the candy that I have in my mouth into somebody's wine glass at the party. This is going to get full, by the way. I just want people to know. Um, that's the first one. That's something very small that we can do. 